Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and I'm here with Luna today to do a little whip and chat, but this time I have been tagged. I have a tag questions video and it's all about diamond painting. So get a drink, get your diamond painting or whatever you'd like to craft on today and join me. We're going to go ahead and um, uh, I'm going to refill my pen while I'm talking about this because um, y'all always have questions. Luna, this is Almond Blossom by Jada Gem Shop. I am on the last section, <laughs> the last section of the second row, and um, I am using a 3D printed tray. I'm so sorry, I cannot remember. I can't. I know it's terrible. I have a, I have a bad memory. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> no, I went, I went back and looked a couple times and I cannot, I cannot find it. So if, if you have watched all my videos, well, first of all, thank you. But, um, if you remember where it's from, please let me know in a comment down below so that I can fix my brain and, uh, and actually remember where it's from. I am going to use this pen, which was a, I, um, uh, repurchase, like a purchase from someone. I think it's a lace and lace. Um, I'm going to use, where is it? I can't find the one that I've been using, so I'm going to use this one. It's Franda's Crafty Corner Cherry Blossom Putty. I'm really loving the putty. I really like it. Um, and what else? I've got this needle minder came from my friend Cal from Cal's All Crafts. Um, as a gift and this one this little cat butt I've got these available on my website rachelraycraft.com that's where I put all of my d stash paintings and stuff like that I'll get to it in a minute um, but I do have some diamond paintings still on the website from when I restocked my um, my site um, I have to basically uh, go and de-stash a lot of my paintings because we are going to be moving in a couple months and I'll give you real life updates here at the end of the tag so if you want to stick around or scooch to the end you can feel free but I think that this is going to answer a lot of questions that I get about diamond painting I was tagged by Miss Coffee so definitely check out Miss Coffee I will tag her and all the people that I'm tagging to do this video uh, which I am in no particular order. Uh, these just came off the top of my head. I'd like to tag my friend Katie at Diamonds and Washi, Anthony at Single and Placing, Tia from Tia's Crazy Craft Addiction, Wolfpack Diamond Painting, Stephanie has to do this as well. I miss her videos. And Sophie from the Diamond Help Desk. So uh, tag your it. <laughs> Good luck. I'll send you the questions. And um, yeah, let's let's uh, get started. We're gonna we're gonna start with some brown. Um, I'm using the kind of like Amazon container system, the briefcase system. I got this um, like a, I think it's a 60, 60 container case from Heika, my friend Heika Stone Cold Coffee Crafts. Okay, are we ready? Does that answer all the questions? I'm using a light pad as well. I'll have everything linked in the description box, y'all. Just open up the description down below. All right, so the first question is, because I know this is going to take forever, <laughs> so I'm going to try to go fast. <laughs> um, how many diamond paintings, diamond paintings have you completed? That's actually a really hard question to answer, um, but if I go back and I look at my completed diamond paintings playlist, yes, I have a playlist. I tell you all about the painting and the goods and the bads and all that, the pros and the cons, whatever. Um, it says I have 42 videos in that um, section, but I know that I've completed more. I probably have completed more like 40 or 40, 50 or so, um, but there were a couple that did not go on. Actually, you know what? It might even out because I have had a couple of diamond paintings actually completed for me. So yeah, somewhere in the 40s, definitely, definitely. Um, I've had about, I think, six, five or six completed by um, my, my diamond painter in residence. <laughs> Not quite in residence, but very close in residence. Um, 
who's helped me a lot with um, finishing diamond paintings and giving us feedback on them. But yeah, 40 ish is, is a good roundabout number. Um, how many diamond paintings do I have in my stash? Who, um, I want to say like probably, probably upwards of like 70 or so. I actually don't know. Um, I have, I have to stop looking up and trying to, trying to think about it too hard. Um, I have one side, one side of a closet, a wardrobe is full of diamond paintings. I've got one cabinet part of a closet full of diamond paintings. I've shown this on my vlogs, by the way, which is on Patreon, but, um, <clears throat> And then I have an entire portfolio, which is actually under the, my desk right now. And there's got to be like another dozen or so of them in, in this portfolio, just laying flat. So if I had to guess it was in the, it would be in the seventies. I'll have a, I'll have a more accurate number when I move, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm trying really hard to pare it down. I'm not counting the ones that I put on my website. Um, so yeah, <laughs> a lot. Um, mostly, mostly because, um, you know, I get sent, well, I used to get sent paintings a lot more. Um, but then the shipping issues around COVID happened and I get a lot less, um, diamond paintings now, which is fine. It's fine. It's all good. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've slowed down, I've slowed down on it a little bit, um, but I have a lot and it's too much. I need to share love. <laughs> um, number three, when did you begin diamond painting? So I began in the spring of 2018. It was probably March time and um, I saw I saw these ads and I was intrigued. Um, I saw time lapses of people doing diamond painting and I just thought that it was, it looks so cool. So that's really what got me into it. Um, I got my first, my first diamond painting was a partial. I got a pack of two and, um, yeah, I did those in like a day. I was hooked. So <laughs> that was it was, it was really nice. Um, it's so relaxing and it's kind of like a puzzle. So that it really, it really kind of triggered my, my puzzle brain. I was like, Ooh, look at all these little things. And, um, I thought it was a little bit kind of maybe tacky looking. Um, but actually I grew to love them. I love the sparkle. I love the glitz and the glam. I think they look so pretty and now especially now that we have hand charting and stuff like it's it's gone leaps and bounds ahead of what it was back in 2018 that's that's for sure number four if you could only purchase from one diamond painting company for the rest of your life who would you purchase from and why so um I, I'm sure that that will come as no surprise that it would be Diamond Art Club. Um, I have been with them since the beginning and I feel like we've worked through lots of stuff together and um, I think that their quality, I really enjoy their quality. I know it's not for everybody and I know that I'm going to get a couple thumbs down on this video because of it. I don't care. Everybody has their own preferences. And personally, I would say DAC. When diamond painting, this is number five. When diamond painting, what is your go-to media to consume? Audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube. Um, Twitch is my go-to now. Um, but before, it used to be YouTube. Um, I used to be on YouTube so much and especially when I was first learning. So those of you who are just getting into the craft now, I get it. Like you're not crazy. Um, I will watch YouTube all day, every day about diamond painting. 
And now that we have Twitch and we have a lot of creators over there, um, it, I just find it really fun and engaging. And um, I there's so many different like genres of stuff that you can be watching. Sometimes I just put on like, there's one channel that's all about otters. Okay. And like it's otters in like a cons conservation, like a rescue place in Canada. I mean, you can find anything that you want over there, but it's super relaxing. It's nice to hang out with friends over there and I really enjoy it. But YouTube was my number one place. Um, that actually changes depending on what craft I'm doing. Like for, uh, for, cause I'm, I do lots of crafts and I know that this isn't diamond painting, but for stitching and stuff, I will absolutely listen to, uh, recaps of book series on YouTube. I will like plot summaries. Um, I will listen to audiobooks um, and floss tube, you know, like I still watch YouTube, but my YouTube viewing habits have changed when it comes to diamond painting. Number six, what's your favorite category to diamond paint? Landscapes, fantasy animals, etc. Mm. If I look around, uh, my favorite thing to diamond paint is ladies. <laughs> Most of the diamond paintings that I personally have completed are of um, cartoon people. And I just find it really fun. And I know it's not for everybody. Um, I know a lot of people who love to do landscapes. Um, I know lots of people right now who, like me, are working with the Summer of the Masters event. And there's a very wide variety of the kind of art that you can find made by people who made art prior to, what is it now? 1927. So I think there's, there's something for everybody out there. And I love that. Um, but for me, <laughs> for me, apparently my favorite thing is, uh, ladies, <laughs> but you know, no shade. I just, I, I love, I love diamond painting beautiful things and really colorful things. Number seven, what is the artist you've completed the most diamond paintings from? Manny Manzano. Uh, hands down, I'm a Mandy fan. Um, I have quite a few. I have JoJo's as well, but Mandy's, I've done more Mandy's in my time. If you haven't found Mandy Manzano, I think you should definitely check her out. Um, she does exclusive exclusive work with Diamond Art Club. Um, and I just got one in the mail today, which I can't wait to share with you. Um, it'll either be two, Thursday or Friday. Um, and I will have that unboxing for you. Um, the All Cats Go to Heaven 2, which just released. It is so beautiful and it's going to go so well with my All Dogs Go to Heaven. Um, piece. I'm, I'm just, I'm surprised. On one hand, I'm really surprised how long it took for that one to come out. But on the other hand, this could have been made, like she could have made this artwork after she had her baby. Um, you know, family comes first. So absolutely no shade. You got to do what you got to do. Um, but it's, it's the perfect companion piece for her other art, which is, I'm not sure if it's still on the website. I don't have time to look, but, um, yes, Manny Manzano, one of my favorite artists of all time. I love her style. I love diamond painting her work because she has this, like mosaic style. And I always fill in the black outline first because I find it almost like, almost like coloring then because you're, you're, you're like painting out this outline and then you're filling in the, the bubble. You know what I mean? It's so nice. It's so nice. And I have so many of hers that I haven't actually unboxed on the channel. <laughs> so maybe one day you'll get those from me, but I have a lot of Mandy's in my collection, in my stash that I just haven't, haven't opened because I love her stuff and I want it all. <laughs> Um, number eight, what, oh no, 
Hang on. Oh, well, number eight is what is the artist you own the most diamond paintings from? And it's probably Mandy as well. I haven't categorized my diamond paintings by artist or anything. Um, I'm trying to think because... Yeah, if I'm if I'm thinking correctly, I think it might be Mandy as well. But I have a lot, like I have different styles, different artists. I'm not particularly partial to just one artist, and that's it. You know what I mean? I I have I have art from all kinds of people, but um, I'd have to really go through it again. I haven't I haven't quite. Um, paid that close attention if you know what I mean I know that there's a lot of people that use an app to categorize or to like organize their stash I should probably get on that so that I can actually tell you all and I guess while I'm cleaning out the craft room <laughs> I will definitely have to do that but number nine what is your go-to wax when diamond painting so um I like to change it up every once in a while, but, um, I, I like Miss Coffee. I use blue wax. I also use pink wax, uh, but when I want to feel fancy or, you know, when I, when I want to treat myself, I use patty wax, randas. Um, I have used blue tack in the past. I find that blue tack is too difficult, like too sticky for AB diamonds and Pink wax is perfect for AB diamonds. So, you know, let's move on to a bigger color so I don't have to change colors all the time. Let's go to this major color, 3809. Love the teals in this, by the way. Number 10, what do you do with your finished diamond paintings? You hang them, put them in a portfolio or something else. Most of my finishes... Most of them go flat in a portfolio if they fit. Um, if they do not fit and I'm not hanging them, uh, they, they get rolled up and put back in their box and they get stored in their box because Luna sheds. So I don't wanna get her fur all over them and it's kind of the easiest, you know, built-in storage that we have. Um, I remember when Cheryl Burke was doing a lot of diamond painting, she showed off this one really cool, kind of expensive um, storage solution, and I really wanted to get it, but it's just it's just a little too far out of my price range. Um, I I would love to have like a standing. What is it called? It's like a. It's almost like an artist portfolio that has its own hanger system. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, I like to keep them flat. Um, I hang some of them, but not all of them are, you know, what I would consider displayable for me. I like to do diamond paintings for the, for the art's sake, for the for the joy that it brings me while I'm working on it and not necessarily because I want to hang it in my house. So I would say most of the time it goes in the portfolio or in the box. But I do love the ones that I have on my walls and honestly I cannot wait to switch it up. So <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be some changes soon, that's for sure. Number 11, do you like to open your kits right away or do you keep them sealed until you're ready to work on them? Um, well, because, because I make videos for YouTube, um, I open them pretty much right away. Not always right away. Um, case in point, I have five, six. I have five diamond paintings from the... Black Friday sale last year and I have one that I got from Royal Diamond Painting. Um, I really hope that she's okay. I haven't heard anything. Um, things, things went a little bit pear-shaped last year for me and my family so I just did not have the opportunity to unbox them. Um, 
but most of the time I do my best to to open them pretty much right away and make a video on them uh, as long as everything is hunky dory <laughs> in in my personal life. Number 12, what is your number one unicorn kit that you currently do not own, but hope to one day? So something I'd like to mention is the definition of a unicorn kit. A unicorn kit is a diamond painting that you can no longer buy that will not be made again. Um, it, either it was limited edition or it came out years ago and stopped being made by a certain company. Uh, and you want that particular kit, that original kit, it's kind of like if, for example, uh, with uh, cross stitch, I have a unicorn chart that I want. And every time that I see it on eBay, it ends up selling for $400. I don't have $400 for a cross stitch chart. So I will just keep waiting until maybe one day the price goes down. I'm sure that, you know, either I will lose interest or whatever, but uh, a unicorn kit for me that I don't own. Other than maybe Giselle, the one of the princess panels from Diamond Art Club, I don't know if there are any that I... Or like Brave. There was a there was a, a Merida painting as well. But I think that by getting Tiana from one of my friends, I think I'm okay. Um, I don't think that I need to have it. I'm not in the market for something that that is almost unattainable. But um, I know that there there have been people out there calling things unicorns that in in the crafting world we use the unicorn word very specifically and I'm not trying to gatekeep that but um, definitions mean something <laughs> it's something that you cannot buy and it's so difficult to find nowadays all right sorry about that number 13 what is the kit in your stash that you are most looking forward to working on Hmm. This one was actually one of the ones I was most looking forward to working on because it it's like it's replacing an actual art piece in my home. So it like it's functional and and I've been wanting to do this painting since like I started diamond painting. Um, it was one of the first ones that I bought. I bought it from a different company at first, um, but I really didn't like the quality, so I was really happy when Jade came out with it. Um, but the one, if it wasn't for like seasonal events and stuff that's coming up, hmm, there is one. What is the name of it? I have it and I haven't opened it yet. It's that um, night scene in Japan. Hang on, let me see if I can find the name of it. Okay, so there's there's one in my stash and there's one that's on its way. <laughs> so aside from, you know, the All Dogs Go to Heaven and all of those, I did purchase Sakura Festival, uh, which is beautiful. And the one that is on its way to me soon that I just purchased is... Um, flower delivery I think is what they called it it's the newer rendition it was recharted and resold um and it's is it chris I think it is uh anyway it's Kiki's delivery service and I love Studio Ghibli I love all of the um I love all that artwork anyway but the fact that like I can I can go and live in this little like world with all these beautiful flowers and everything. I'm just, I'm loving it. Also, side note, it is dinner time and there's going to be some noise in the background. So, um, I hope that doesn't bother you. Uh, but yes, I am really looking forward to those. And the next question is, 
14, do you prefer confetti color blocking or a mix of both? I love color blocking. Okay, so I understand the need for confetti. Like, I, I get it. It is necessary. Otherwise, you're just going to have strips of color. And some paintings really need that level of detail for them to look good. Um, but in terms of enjoyment for me of diamond painting, I think that I have become a little bit more impatient after all of these years. Um, five, six years of diamond painting. I just, I want to do them quicker. I hate single placing. <laughs> um, and I don't like hunting for symbols, but I have found strategies for how to kind of get around my feelings of, oh, this is going too slow, you know? Um, I like to start with the symbols that I can see the most of and then work my way to the least amount of symbols, usually. That's that's how I like to do it. And, um, and it makes it more enjoyable either way. But I do, I do enjoy my color blocking. I, I have to say it. 15. How do you pick which piece you want to work on next? I just go with what what feels good to me. Like sometimes friends of mine will ha have an event, like someone will host an event that requires a certain kind of diamond painting. I have a friend, uh, my friend Heiko Stone Cold Coffee Crafts, who's going to be doing an event called Pogus. It's in celebration of her birthday and her cats. Her cats were born on the same day as herself. So she's doing a special little, you know, diamond paint along just for people who watch the channel, you know, and I'd highly recommend you go follow and um, check out her channel because it is, you know, it's my friend. You should check them out. But um, so sometimes I do it for an event, like for this painting. I knew that Summer, the Masters, Summer with the Masters was coming up and I'm not entering it for prizes or anything. I just, I just like to have something to do that's on theme, you know, that's fun. I feel like I'm working along with the community. And so that's most of the time. And then other times if I'm free or whatever, I will just pick the one that calls to me the most in that moment. I don't really have like a rotation. I'm sure that there are people out there who are organized with their crafting. I'm, I know there are, but that is, <laughs> that is not me. And, uh, I'm just like, um, by the seat of my pants kind of person <laughs> when it comes to when, I, how I make decisions. And then number 16 says, what is your favorite season or holiday to diamond paint from? Luna's trying to escape the kitchen. Hang on. Okay. So my favorite, I don't, mm, that's a lie. Hang on. Nope. Nope. I do have a favorite season that I like to diamond paint. It's Halloween. Um, but if I had to choose like what season I like to diamond paint in, <laughs> which is how I first read that in my head for some reason. I really like in the winter to diamond paint. I, I find it really, I, I, well, I take that back. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I did like to diamond paint in the winter. I, I, maybe I flip flop. I don't know. I don't know. Cause this year I've really enjoyed diamond painting in the summer and I haven't been doing my fiber arts at all, right? So in the past, I was really very much a winter diamond painter person, but lately I have become a summer diamond painter person. <laughs> and I think I've been talking about this and I think that for, um, you know, this, this, Next project that I'm going to work on, I think I'm going to focus on working on a Halloween kit even before Drills and Chills starts, which is like the the big, you know, Halloween diamond painting event here on YouTube. 
Um, I I think I want to get started early. Who knows? I might be able to finish the one that I start in July or August and then start one in September. Um, I've got so many Halloween kits that I really, really love. And, you know, I'd really like to work on an Ennis Guerrero. Like, I just think it would be super cool because I love, love, love Ennis' work. So, yeah. <laughs> Then number 17 says, do you work on one kit at a time or do you have multiple whips at once? Well, right now I have multiple works in progress that are open, that are in a state of progress. However, when I work on a diamond painting, I usually work on it exclusively. So the last two paintings that I've done, I have been, you know, working from start to finish without any any kind of, um, you know, flip-flopping, so to speak. Like, I'm not taking this project off for a week and then a different project off for a week. Um, I, I stopped doing that a couple of years ago. I was doing it. Uh, I was finding that I was entering lots of different online paint-alongs and stuff and um, I, w I wanted to be in, you know, all the things and do all the things and not exclude anybody because, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that. But then I noticed that I had like, you know, five, six, seven diamond paintings on the go at once. And it was really, really overwhelming for me and my brain. So I'm working on just one at a time for now. Uh, and the other ones that I've already started, I work on them intermittently uh, between focus pieces. Like when I finish with, with the, this one, I might take out my heaven and earth design again. But in general, when I'm super excited about a project, I will just work on it until it's finished. Like um, Bayou Lady, for example, um, picked her up, started her December 1st and finished her at the end of May. Or was it the middle of May? Anyway, one or the other. So that's how I am kind of moving forward with my diamond painting. But uh, there is no right or wrong way in this craft. Whatever feels good to you is what you should be doing. If you like having loads of works in progress at a time, that's fine. It's just that for some people like me, uh, if I see that I have a lot of things that are unfinished, it makes me feel kind of like a failure. Even though I know deep down I'm not, uh, that is just, that is just a um, sucky brain attitude, <laughs> right? Uh, trying to foil me. Then number 18 says neutral or dark pieces or do you like colorful pieces? I like really colorful pieces. Uh... <laughs> Hang on. Do, do I just live in a duality? I think I might just live in a duality. This is weird. I love super colorful paintings and I really like a lot of 310 in my diamond paintings. So... <laughs> I think, I think I might just be a little bit of both. Um, when I, I often think about Nightbringer, which was my, uh, not actually my largest amount of 310. I think the largest amount of 310 that I did was, um, where the fun never ends. But, um, yeah. I like, I like the 310. 310 is really shimmery and fun to, to work with. I don't find it too monotonous unless there's a sea of it like Nightbringer. That, it did take me a little while to, uh, to complete that. But in the end, I have no regrets. That is an absolutely beautiful, stunning painting. And I get loads and loads of compliments on it. So I like both. <laughs> I do not like brown and beige. That's the only, the only kind of diamond painting that I will stay away from, if that makes sense. Not for me. Um, oh, I lost my place. Number 19, large pieces or snack size pieces? I like large pieces. I don't like how long it takes me to do them, but I do like the larger diamond paintings um, because... 
<laughs> I'm a size queen. <laughs> I think that the bigger you go, the better the image will go come out. It's true, it's facts. So it, where I can, I will get the bigger diamond painting. Sometimes it's not always practical um, to get this the super, super big one. I know, for example, just as a little example, this particular kit comes in a larger size, but I knew that I did not have the capacity to do a, what was it, like a 70 or 80 by 100, something like that. It's big. It's too big for me uh, to, to do for a two-month event. This, this piece is pushing it. You know, this size is pushing it for two months for me. But um, I really want to have it done. And I saw the rendering and I thought that it was really good. So I decided to go with it. Number 20, place diamonds with tweezers or a pen. Definitely a pen for me. Uh, I suck at tweezers. Tweezers are great for when I make mistakes or when I'm trying to clean out my diamond painting pen, but I, I have a difficult time with the grip. I think my hands shake a little bit, so um, the, the pen gives me a little bit more accuracy. I know that's not for the same for everybody, but um, there are lots of options out there, and tweezers are just one, <laughs> but Tweezers are great for a lot of people and kudos, kudos for you if you are able to grip tweezers like that and place all of your diamonds. I mean, wow, I'm, I'm actually very impressed. Number 21, square or rounds? Uh, I like both. This is a question I feel like sometimes people want to be on a team, but I want to be on both teams here. I like squares and rounds. Um, most of my diamond paintings are square because I like the way that they look afterwards. But because I diamond paint for for the for the art of diamond painting and not for the result, it, not all of my diamond paintings are hung up. Uh, they're not displayed or sold. Um, they actually, I should, I should mention that I am selling some completed diamond paintings because I realized that some people may want the diamond painting, but not want to do it. So if you are interested again, my website, rachelraycraft.com, I'm sorry to plug you all the time, but I just realized those things have been in there for months and if there's anybody out there that is struggling to to finish a diamond painting and you want to finish one, I've got a couple in there. They're not too expensive. Um, but anyway, I just digressed. When I finish a square diamond painting, I like to usually do a round then as like a palette cleanser because rounds are way quicker. You might have seen Katie's video. Um, diamonds and washi. You might have seen her video on the, which is incredible, by the way, that she's doing all of these like experiments and stuff. I've tried. I don't do well under pressure. So thank you, Katie, for, for doing that for us. But rounds are indeed a little bit quicker to place. And so when, when you've just finished a very long and harrowing journey of nothing but square drills, it's nice to go and do a, a round one and get it done real quick. So I like both, but if I, if I had to choose between one or the other, I would choose square. I just, I really like the way that they look in the end. Number 22, what is your favorite method for placing AB diamonds? So AB drills have a, like an iridescent coating on them. Kind of like a lot of jewelry, actually. And um, instead of being just straight up resin or acrylic, they have this little topper on the diamond. 
And that coating sometimes makes it difficult for the wax to release off the diamond. It, depending on what you're using, uh, it could pull the coating right off the diamond. So what I like to do, and this is almost always when I'm working on a painting with AB coating on the drills, I really like to wait until the end of the section or wait until my wax is not as sticky anymore. It doesn't have much grip. It can barely hang on to a normal drill. You're kind of going there and stabbing the diamond over and over again and going, oh, I'm getting frustrated. That is the point where I'll break out the AV diamonds and I will place them on that section because just that teeny tiny bit of grip will pick up the ABs, no problem. It might not pick up a regular drill. It'll definitely pick up the ABs and it'll save you a lot of headache because if you press onto an AB diamond with fresh wax, you just put it in the pen, it's gonna, it's, it's not gonna release the diamond. And that's annoying. It's super annoying. I've tried different kinds of waxes and putties and, you know, you name it. And I find that once that stickiness has gone, you, you know, even if you use the oils on your fingers or something like that, once once you have lost the initial stickiness and, and maybe it's not sticky enough to pick up these drills, that's the best time to place your ABs. There is another method, uh, another company that makes these things called pretty placers and they're on Etsy. They're based in the US and I used to get them. Uh, I haven't, again, I haven't purchased a lot for diamond painting in a long time. That doesn't mean that they're not a good company. They make wax crayons uh, for diamond painting. And if you watch Stitcherista, oh, I should have tagged Stitcherista. Stitcherista, if you watch this, you're tagged too. <laughs> I don't care if the limit's five, you're tagged too. Um, Stitcherista used to use these um, pretty placers a lot and they are super good for AB diamonds. I stopped using them because they work really exceptionally well on round drill diamond paintings, and I don't do that many round drill diamond paintings, but uh, I still have them actually in my in my drawer over there, and I'll have to one day, one day do a little revisit to uh, to pretty placers and and check them out and see what they're what they're doing these days. But yeah, um, those are the two kind of favorite methods that I would have in my back pocket when it comes to AB diamonds. And then number 23 is, what is your preferred method of sectioning off a canvas? Release papers, 100%. I always use these. Um, I am currently using washi tape just to show me where the end of the plastic is because if it's like this right here I can't tell where the end of it is because the plastic blends in so well with the poured glue so as long as I have this little line of washi tape I know exactly where the end of the piece of plastic is but in general I really like release papers I do not put release papers over the entire canvas. I've done it a couple times. I don't do that anymore. I only do it on the next row that I'm about to do because, first of all, the, the cover that comes on your kit is always going to be the best cover, hands down, to keep dirt, dust, fur, everything off, okay? <coughs> Sorry, I'm still getting over sickness. But when you put down release papers and you're working on a big kid, the next row and the next row and the next row, they overlap usually, not always. Some people are really good at placing them, but they overlap and they can pull away. They can make you get more dirt and dust on your canvas. And I'm not a dirty person, but 
there's there's a lot of dust there's dander there's there's my dander there's my hair um and these kits are really sticky so i just do one row at a time and then that way i know that the rest of the diamond painting is completely safe it can still be moved around and i don't have to worry about the um about it getting getting you know icky or that the papers are going to fall off or whatever so yes <laughs> Number 24. This is the last question. Do you have any other crafty hobbies aside from diamond painting? Yes, I knit and crochet. I have a channel dedicated to that. It's Rachel Ray Fiber Arts on YouTube. I'd love it if you would join me over there. Um, and I, let's see, I diamond paint, cross stitch, um, do I do anything else? I really like watercolor painting. I've dabbled in paint by number. It doesn't really hold my attention. I usually forget about it after a couple days. Um, but I do still have a couple um, paint by numbers from uh, Diamond Shop, actually. And I've got the next color I'm going to do this one and I know I've missed a couple drills but I can barely see them now because they're kind of just melding into the other color the other symbol and I'm going to start over here so you're not going to really see the whole section at first but just trust me um my hobbies have changed a lot over the years but I think the the longest running hobby for me has definitely been the diamond painting uh, and the cross stitch. I started cross stitching in 2019 and I do really enjoy it. Also knitting, I, I find it so soothing and that's my new winter craft. So when it's really cold and gross out, it's, it's knitting. When I have to travel somewhere, I break out the knitting. I find it super convenient and portable. But with that said, I do I do actually have some uh, really cool diamond paintings to show you. I have an unboxing coming up that um, I think you're really going to like. They are very portable, so um, if you're on the go, then you you might really like this. But yeah, I, I like to dabble in and out of hobbies, and um, I've, I've always been like that my entire life, so... A little bit ADD, I think. <laughs> Undiagnosed, but you know, uh, it's it's kind of obvious. But yeah, in case you didn't know, I am over on Twitch and you can find me diamond painting over there. So if you would like to follow me, I'm Rachel Ray Craft over there as well. And we are just about to hit 3,000 followers. I think that you watching this video, if you're watching this and you're like, oh my God, I didn't know you were on Twitch. You can help make the difference because I am so close. I'm looking at it right now. 2,924 followers and at 3,000 followers, I am planning on doing some really fun like gaming, community gaming stream for everybody. So please, uh, please go follow. It is free. You don't have to pay a cent. And I know that some of you might not like it. It's fine. I like to be in different places. I'm still here on YouTube. I had cut back a lot because of the personal life stuff, but don't worry. It's all going to be fine. I am coming back. I'm doing more stuff <laughs> and uh, trying to right now, right now we're going to move into the personal part. We're moving away from the tag. Thank you, Miss Coffee, for tagging me um, and getting me to uh, agree to a little whip and chat. I need, I needed some ideas and maybe some of you might be new to diamond painting and you didn't know those things. So I hope that helped someone, but, um, yeah, so we're, we're up for a lot of changes. Um, James has like a cardiovascular stress test and echocardiogram scheduled for next month, in just a few weeks time. 
we're both getting serious about our health and trying to make that the number one priority. Um, now that the shock of, you know, his mother's passing is kind of behind us, I think, a little bit, a little bit. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves, that we are doing what we need to, what needs to be done. Part of that is that we will be moving, uh, into her home and it, 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 it is willed to us. So we will be moving there and we're estimating winter. I would love to be moved in by Christmas. That is my goal. So, uh, there's going to be a lot going on. There's going to be a lot of organizing, cleaning, decluttering, donating, um, and a lot of emotional stuff going on too, I'm sure. In the next couple of months, it's going to be really hard. I'm going to miss this house. I was just talking about this actually just yesterday. Um, I think I've lived in this house longer than I've lived in any other house in my life. We, we moved house a lot. Um, yeah, so 2000, yeah, two, I, the, the last place that, you know, I considered home was my, the house that I grew up in my grandparents last residence. Uh, we moved in there in 2001 and I moved out in 2005. So I wasn't there that long. It felt like a really long time, you know, uh, but I was a teenager and I think that, I think that time bends when you're a teenager. I'm kind of convinced that it does, but anyway, so, uh, this is going to be a big deal, a big move, a uh, big change. And lots of, lots of feelings, <laughs> but mostly good things, mostly good things. Um, last week we went to another wedding of our friends, um, and it was incredible. It was a wonderful kind of relaxed day, lots of wonderful people and food and laughter, um, I did, I, I've done a lot over on Twitch lately. Um, I had a charity stream to raise money for this um, organization called Child's Play. And I've been raising money for them for well over a year now. Uh, but they, they're an incredible organization. And my Twitch followers had surpassed my expectations and my goals for the stream. One of the rewards for the money raised, we raised a total of $380 for, I think it was, if we do the currency conversion, I'm pretty sure it was really close to $400, but $380 for Child's Play on that one stream. And so I went ahead and gave them a 1,000 stitches stream yesterday. And my voice is still kind of broken because of it. <coughs> Not going to lie. I am recovering from bronchitis, which I got um, after my brother-in-law's wedding. And uh, so I'm trying to take it easy. I really am. But like, I also just want to get back to the way things are supposed to be. I'm taking my medication and keeping my fingers crossed. I hope that it is cleared up, but if we get to Friday and I still have this really wicked cough in the middle of the night, I am probably going to go back because I might just need more antibiotics. So yeah. Uh, and then what else? Luna's doing great. She's shedding everywhere, which is mega annoying but it happens twice a year <laughs> and uh she's gotta she's gotta get her summer coat going I mean she's full of fur like and every day I'm going outside with a brush and I'm removing basically a whole nother one of her <sighs> the birds must be loving it because you know the fur disappears overnight <laughs> but yeah it's been so far 
an excellent summer. A lot of a lot of the you know stress and the negative feelings like you know it was it was just so difficult for so long I felt like I was in a constant state of just like oh everything is going wrong in life everyone is dying you know and that's gone now and I feel lighter I feel lighter I feel more capable and that's why I'm trying to take this opportunity to just get healthy focus on us focus on getting getting stuff together and you know moving into my new family home it's gonna be a huge change so I'll keep you updated um but for now we are hanging out and trying to make the pieces fall into the right spots you know what I mean yeah, it is now 7 p.m. So I should probably end this video for now. But I do thank you so much for joining me today. We did get a lot done, actually. Um, that's not much of a section left to complete. Probably four or five colors. But I think you can hear it in my voice. I am losing it. And I have a Zoom call tonight with my patrons. So uh, really quick. I know that I've been mentioning it a lot, but my Patreon supporters help pay the bills. I have a couple of levels on my Patreon. One is a tip jar. If you enjoy the content that I make and you would like to buy me a coffee, basically, the price of a coffee, $3 a month, um, just for making content and, you know, you, you like it, that would be amazing. Uh, the second tier is a vlog tier if you like to see behind the scenes and you want to know more about what's going on and see lots of Luna, see lots of Ireland, then the vlog tier is for you. Then I have a live streaming tier. I will be doing more live streams, I promise. Uh, we've got one scheduled for this weekend and um, it's going to be a blast. We're going to be diamond painting together. You can join me and it's a private live stream only for patrons. And then the final tier is the crafting Zoom tier. So we have a crafting circle Zoom. And that's what we're doing tonight. I'm, I don't know if you see this video now, if you will have time to enter tonight's Zoom. But um, it happens on Friday, oh, Fridays, on a Wednesday, the last Wednesday of the month. It is at like 3.30 in the afternoon Eastern time, which I know is not great for everyone, but not everybody has a job, right? So if you would like to join us in the crafting circle, it's very low pressure. We just hang out and share what we've been working on and we talk about life and stuff. Very low pressure, but it would be absolutely amazing to have you there if you would like to join us. Thanks again to Miss Coffee and to all of you. And I will see you all very soon in my next video tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Bye.